Dominating the skyline behind me is one of the most recognisable landmarks in Northern Ireland, certainly familiar to anyone living in Belfast. The outline of Cave Hill is said to have suggested the profile of a reclining giant to the fertile imagination of Jonathan Swift, who was then inspired, we are further told, to write Gulliver's Travels, or at least to write the first book of those travels which depicts Lemuel Gulliver living as a giant among the tiny people of Lilliput. Inspired and turned by that story, Belfast City Council has named its creation, the land on which I'm walking, Giant's Park. I use the word creation because although this looks for all the world like natural heath and meadowland, with all the plant and bird life you'd expect to find in a wilderness setting of this type, it is in fact entirely man-made. We're on the North Foreshore of Belfast Lock, and just over ten years ago, the North Foreshore looked like this. This was a landfill site. Countless layers of countless tons of compacted rubbish accumulated over many years. A magnet for scavenging gulls, and an eyesore for just about every other species on Earth. Until the year 2007, that is, when a transformation began. I am now walking on 340 acres of the largest development site in the city of Belfast, and the council are in the ongoing task of transforming it into, in their words, a safe, sustainable asset which will attract investors and create jobs and other opportunities for our city. That physical transformation, as you can see, has already been achieved, and there are now plans and schemes aplenty to utilise this space. But Teresa Slevin, a civil engineer with Belfast City Council, who is project manager of Giants Park, is very open about the challenges as well as the advantages of building anything on this site. Are there particular difficulties or challenges for building on this? Of course. Assuming so because the ground's not that stable or something like that. Of course, like yeah, it was a, a former landfill site, so there's all sorts of spread beneath, you know. Yeah. Um, and so the, the major issue, obviously, is settlements. In order to make a, a platform so that we could develop on. Um, the first thing that we did was we uh, got funding from the European Union and Invest NI and Belfast City Council um, to build the road infrastructure that you see now right. that brings the two roads, the primary road and the secondary road. And we developed the three plateaus so that um, developers have a bit of a, a site then that they can build from. But obviously the main issue here is the, the gas that is produced from the landfill. So that, that there's organic material, yes. there's all sorts of things down there, I mean yeah. everything people were throwing away essentially. Basically, yeah. And, and presumably that, that lets off gas as a yeah. methane, would yes, that be, that methane be one of them? Yes, methane gas, yeah, would be the, right. the main one. So in order to develop then we have to contain the gas underneath and um, what actually happened on the, the southern section of the site here was because it was more recent and it's obviously producing more active gases. Right. Um, Belfast City Council undertook took a project where we put 235 um, gas wells and a manifold of pipework which extracts all the gas from the southern portion of the site and it takes it down to, I don't know if you can just see them, um, the gas generators down there and generates electricity. Oh, so right. that's been in place since 2009. So um, that's turning something that could have been a problem absolutely. and to identify it. So it's actually yeah. generating energy in other words. It is, right? yeah, that's right. Right, so you don't cont you don't keep it on, down no, under the can't. ground. You have, to, you have to let it out. You have to let it out. So that's what the gas infrastructure. Underneath the, uh, the roads that you see there, we have a, called a HDPE um, membrane. So that seals the gas underneath. And then we're, um, underneath the film studio, there are gas abstraction wells that take any gas that is produced and then also take that down to the electricity right. station to vent it. Because so, obviously there's certain restrictions, you know, yeah. um, and we wouldn't want any of that gas getting into the building where it could potentially cause serious problems. Right, so it's, it's not a very nice gas, no, 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 no. <laughs> not <laughs> just that it's smelly, it's explosive, <laughs> exactly. By any standards, the council has achieved a remarkable transformation. Not merely in visual terms, but also in terms of making the site safe for further development. Teresa is quick to acknowledge the financial support of the European Regional Development Fund and Invest Northern Ireland in getting it thus far in such a relatively short time. And of course, the vital and morale-boosting input of two other Ulster giants, Belfast Harbour Commissioners and Northern Ireland Screen.
who have led the way with Belfast Harbour Studios, a state-of-the-art world-class film studio, soundstage and production office complex which has already housed a major television series, somewhat fittingly a Superman prequel entitled Krypton for the Sci-Fi Channel. Another environmental constraint that would-be investors and developers have to take into account in Giants Park sounds more like an attraction than an obstacle, because this is a special protection area for winter migrating birds, surely an appealing aspect of this site. And we haven't yet mentioned all the advantages that Belfast City Council has provided to enable future development. We've provided roads and all the services, so the NIE, the, your Phoenix Gas, your um, Service Ducks BT Virgin are all in place. Water? So that water, of course, and sewage, yeah. Right. Um, so anything, any developer coming has all of those things in place that they can develop and then that they can tie into right. those. So that was all of it, you know, but any, nobody else could have come and did all that infrastructure. It was, it was a nine and a half million pound project for us to, right. to put that, all that in place, yeah. given the constraints. Um, the project was uh, started in 2015. Um, it was an absolute nightmare of a winter, <laughs> uh, very windy here, yeah, as it always yeah, is, yeah. and wet. Mm. Um, so that led to some difficulties when we were trying to lay the, um, the membrane underneath the road. Mm. Um, but thankfully, we were able to make up the programme. We worked closely with the contractor to get extra resources um, and things like that, so that it meant that we did hit our targets. Those targets having been met means that the hard work preparing this site has already been done. So what next? What are the possibilities, the hopes, the aspirations, the actual plans for this site? One person who might have the answer to some of those questions is Belfast City Council's Estates Manager, Cathy Reynolds. What we want to see is this used for the benefit of, of the people and, and, and so that it comes into some sort of sustainable use rather than just sitting empty with, with no use made of that okay. at all. This is a massive improvement from a landfill site, mm -hmm. number one, right? But it also turns into an asset in terms of it, it can actually pay for itself ultimately. And that's, 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 that, would that be an ideal situation? Well, that's right absolutely the ideal situation. What we want to see and what the council and, and our elected members are very keen to, to see and, and they've set the vision for this is that it will deliver on jobs, that it will deliver on um, economic and social benefits for the people of the local area and wider, but it is to have that economic benefit arising from what was a liability. So the proposals at the minute um, are for the development of, of the entirety of the site, and as you can see down behind us, the, some of the development has already started. Yeah. We have the magnificent film studio on an eight acre portion of the site, and they have proposals to develop further. Um, we have 30 acres set aside for an environmental resource park um, and building on, I suppose, the legacy of what this was and, uh, as a former landfill site and we're looking for environmental and clean tech uses and we have with, with various proposals um, in train currently. And then another very exciting um, development that's hopefully coming forward now in the near future is the development of the portion we're standing on at the moment plus another 50 acres across here, so um, a 200 acre site in total that's um, hopefully going to bring forward a commercial leisure-led and mixed-use development. But you're, you're confident and optimistic in all those kind of things? Very confident and optimistic. It's a fantastic site in terms of its location. It's, it's only minutes from the city centre. It's close to the port. It's close to the airport. It's close to all the road infrastructure. Um, and Actually, when people come out on the site, they're, they're amazed that a site of this size sits so close to the city centre yeah. and has such fantastic opportunities and fantastic views. Um, and I mean, over to that side, of course, we have Cave Hill and, and Belfast Castle also also council owned um, and as I say Dunn crew in behind us so there's, there's masses of opportunities it's a, it's a wonderful asset and the council see it as a wonderful asset for Belfast and, and, and the wider region. <laughs>